Welcome back to Self Built. Today I'm going to be showing you a full build on a piece of equipment. And what is that equipment you ask? It is the Ultimate Level Gym or Trident Spear. Gonna spear some big gains for you. You may wonder what this piece of equipment does. I'm going to go over explaining what it does, how it sets up. This is going to be a little bit of a longer video, so just to kind of give you an overall view. First, I'm going to show you what it does, a little bit of explaining on how to do it, some tips and tricks of setting it up. Then I'm going to show you some demos of exercises and then the build at the end. So you can skip around to however you want to do that. But to go into what this does, it's basically a giant lever arm that's very universal. You can add weighted plates onto it. You can also add cable resistance to it as well. And you can adjust where the starting point, how high or how low the handle will be. And you can also adjust the other end. So the handles on this side, you can also adjust the other end. So that way it'll adjust the arc of the exercise. So it'll be able to mimic a lot of gym um, machines that you may find. There's a lot of possibilities to this piece of equipment. It's very simple to build. It took me, it was about $115, $120. I just got it all at my local hardware store. I will leave a description below. I was able to get everything at my hardware store except my hinge on Amazon, which is where I had to get it. But I'll leave everything in Amazon. Just so if you don't have a local hardware store, you can just have everything itemized. It makes it easy for you to build it. Now let's show you what this thing looks like and what it can do. Here's a closer look of it. This handle is adjustable. You can take off both of those pipes. You can also take the whole handle off very easily. You load weight here. You can also use this to use resistance on a cable or have it spot and position it in a certain spot. There's another anchor underneath for the same reason. And this is where you will attach to the squat rack or wall, whatever you want to set it up with. Let's set this thing up so you can get a better idea of what this will look like. So this is the hardest way to do it. I usually can just rest it on here, but not everyone's going to have a Smith machine. So I will just rest it. And then I've just got a big fat bolt back here, just like that. Once you've got it set up like this, it's basically like an average landmine. But what I want to do is not everyone's going to have some tie down straps. You could use some chain, but I really like these straps because you're able to adjust the height super quick. You don't have to go in between links or anything like that. So if you don't have any of these, I would highly recommend getting some. And all you do is just attach it to this part right here, just like this. And you can set it up and have it as high or as low as you want as far as a starting point. So it makes it really quick and slick. This handle is easy to remove. It's just a bolt that is holding it together. So all you do is pull that, give it some wiggles, comes right out. So that way you can make it more compact for whatever size gym that you have. And you can also build different handles and attach it to that. You can also remove these. They just unthread. So easy as can be because you won't always want these in your way. Just like that. You can either add weighted plates onto here to hold it, or you can attach some cables underneath or you can add a combination of both. The easiest and fastest way is to, of course, just throw the weight plate on. Simple as that. But honestly, my favorite is to use primarily cable weight and then use this as a way to get up to the working weight or to do some drop sets since it's so much more accessible and easier to get to than undoing each of the weight stacks that I have. Now I would recommend you do basically have to have a lower cable attachment so that way it'll attach right down here and you can have it set up. We've got a weight plate on here and then I've got some lower cables attached to this. 
And then there's one more step you want to do if you want to feel real fancy. Because what you what normally happens is you'll try to tighten this as much as you can. And then you'll feel the weight plate instantly. And then it takes a second for the cables to kick in because it's just not under perfect tension. And this is where this really shines and comes through. All you do is just lift until it kicks in with the cables. And that way you've got both resistance kicking in at the same time. So that way it just feels really smooth and it feels really good. This lever does have a lot of different variations, just depending on whatever you want to do. Right now it's set to get all the resistance from here or just the bottom because you're pushing up. You can also have it so all the resistance is when you're pulling down. All you do is just attach your cables to this top anchor and that way you can have it set up for pull downs or anything like that. You can also adjust the arc of this if you have a hole that is higher or a hole that is lower. I've drilled a top hole and a bottom hole that I'll show you in just a second. But that changes the arc to be more up and down or if you want it to be swinging out more. Just depends on what exercise you want to do. It might be hard to visualize, but I'll show you some examples. Here's a better view of how this is attached. This is the higher one. And then down here is where I drilled the lower one. And it's as simple as just changing the bolt, just moving it down from up. You may notice some damage here. This was from the first workout that I did. I had two inch screws and just one small washer here. And what happened was these little washers, they fell under these slits because they weren't big enough. So it wasn't being very stable or anything like that. So I've replaced it with three inch. And then I've also put a larger one. So it's not going anywhere. I've done three workouts so far and haven't heard any crunching, creaking or anything like that. Everything's been good. And so far I would say it was solid. Let's say we finished doing an exercise. Now we want to adjust the height of this to something else. I'll show you how quick and easy that can be. With this, I'll just carry it down and let it drop to whichever height I want to do. And back to the reason that I like to use cables more often than plates is if I have plates on this piece of wood, if I'm trying to adjust it, I've got to hold whatever weight I've got on here. So it just makes it really challenging, but you can do whichever way you want to. So I'll adjust it to the height right here. And then I'll just take the slack out on these chains on each one. Just like that. And then that trick I showed you a second ago is we want to take the slack out just like that. So that way it's at a completely different location and you can do a totally different workout. A nice little trick that I found to make the adjustments faster and easier is I'll get a small little pipe if you even have one of these, but I just happen to have a small little pipe that I can attach both of the lower pulleys to this and then I'll just have one chain attached to this on the bottom. So that way you only have to adjust one chain so it cuts your adjustment time in half on that. So if you have one of these or if you wanted to make something like that, this does make it a lot easier. It's not just meant for the lower cables as well. I do like to have it on the top ones and then have this attached to the top if I'm doing a lat pull down or something like that. But that's just my version. If you find something that you like different, absolutely give it a try. If it feels better, I would go with that. Let me know what you find out because this is a whole new learning experience for me too. You might be wondering how hard or how long does it take to adjust this part from high to low if you've already got things hooked up. Because one thing that can kind of kill a workout is if your equipment is too complex and it takes too much time to switch out, sometimes it just makes you not want to even use it. With this, it's not bad. So all you gotta do is get that out, put it down here. You might be able to get away with just doing it just like this. You might have to make some adjustments here or here, but it's really not that bad. Boom, just like that. Now it has a different arc swing to it. It does unlock some exercise movements that feel better at this angle coming at instead of that one. So it does take some trial and error, 
But again, I'll have some videos showing you basically what, what position works best for some exercises. And hey, definitely try them all out. See which one feels the best. A couple tips and tricks just to make this seem a little bit quicker to adjust and have a better setup is first you want your top anchor to be in the center point. When I was doing some workouts, I just had it to the side, which it was fine, but at the resting point, it was a little bit not in the middle. And I want to have as little bindage on the hinge as possible. So that just made it seem really nice. Also, if you don't have a tie down strap with this kind of handle to adjust, definitely worth it. You can use a chain or some other way, or you can have this propped on, but this just gives you full adjustability and it's really quick and it's lightweight too. Just super nice. And another is just back to this, having both of the cables come down to one so that way you're not adjusting as much. And the last part is just have fun with it. Experiment with different setups, different ideas. Think of different machines at the gym or ways that you can work out your muscles. And this thing will surprise you. I know I've just kind of scratched the surface on a couple of the exercises, but I'm gonna give you a couple demos right now of different exercises of what you can do. So that way it gives you an idea of what's going on. Here I've got a setup for lap pull downs with this and I'm kind of testing out the weight limits of it. On each stack I've got 100 pounds each, so roughly about 200 pounds. With all this counterweight I'm guessing the handle's somewhere around 180 or so. But I think this will be about the max weight I'll go, at least for now. After doing it for a minute I'll probably check and see if there's any damage. But it feels really sturdy. There's really no cracking or creaking of wood. But at this weight, it does make me wonder if any of the other components may fail. So I think I'll be happy with this weight for at least a while. And there's other ways I can make it harder, like add power bands to it. But this is pretty decent. And one thing I'm not used to is I love being able to actually get a stretch and being able to sit on a normal bench if you've seen any of my older videos, I've got a setup that's similar to this, but I got to get in a certain position on the ground and kneel and stuff. So this is awesome. Here's an exploded view of what this is going to look like. And then I'll explain how I'm going to put it together and what its purpose is. To start over here, this is going to be the handle. All of these pipes are 3 fourths inch. I've got two 8 inch pieces. These are 10s. Never mind. These are 12s. And then these are four inch pipes here. You got your T's there, another four inch. This is a one inch floor flange with a one inch pipe. That is three inches. I've got a four by four, a four inch flange. These are a half inch and then that was a 12 inch. And then this is my hinge. It's actually a wheelbarrow wheel, but we're gonna make it work for something else. And then these are going to be some anchors and spotters depending on what exercise you're doing. All right, we now got it attached. So now what we need to do is attach the other side that will attach the handle. Got that side taken care of. I'm going to skip these two things for now, but what these are, are they're going to be drilled through the top and bottom of this four x four, one's gonna be on the top, one's gonna be on the bottom, and they're gonna serve as a spotting device or hooking cables up to it to give more resistance, depends on what you're doing. 
This I'm going to attach towards the front. It's going to be holding the plate so you can be adding weight onto this. Now what I'm going to be doing is adding the floor flange and also the pipe to this side right here. And my goal is I want this to be detachable from the handle. One thing for space and I can also be interchanging it with other things. My goal is I got this side one size bigger so that way this will slide in here. It almost slides all the way in. I think it's the weld. Well, now it won't come out. I think it's the weld on the inside of the pipe that is barely throwing it off. What I'm going to do is get a grinder and just grind the threads on this a little bit. And then I'm going to drill a punch a hole through this slider bolt so that way you can attach it firmly without it being permanent. All right, now I've got this attached. I'm just gonna thread this in. I do have some of the red thread locker. I'm gonna be using that on the majority of the handle, but not on this. I haven't made up my mind for sure if I like this length, so I'm just gonna be doing some playing around with that, but that doesn't mean that I'm not gonna crank it down pretty good so it doesn't go anywhere. Because this turning a little bit is not my biggest worry. I'll show you what my worry is. All right, so I'm not gonna film all of it, but I'm just gonna tighten this, put it all down. But what I'm gonna put red locker on, the red locker thread on is that, 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 and that. That's it. Not to worry about any of the other parts and we'll see how it holds up. If you, if you guys have never used this, make sure you shake it up and give it 24 hours to fully cure. This stuff stinks. It smells pretty funny, but I'm just gonna cover this pretty good just to give it the best chance to really stick on there because I don't wanna do my backup plan. I will if I have to, but if I don't, then th that's exactly what I want. And then on top of using the thread locker, I'm gonna be using both the vice grips and the pliers to just crank this sucker down and then once it's all dried and everything, then we'll do some testing. Here is the end product. I've got it all tightened down and then I used the red lock tight on that, 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 and that thread. So hopefully when I'm doing anything with these that they won't rotate and break loose. We'll find out. And I think I may add a T on the end here as an extra handle. That is a possibility, but we'll come back in 24 hours and we'll start working some more. Okay, we are back. It's been over 24 hours. So hopefully this red thread locker is fully cured, as strong as it's gonna be. We're gonna test it out. We are going to test and see how much weight it's gonna hold. I'm not gonna do it until it breaks, unless it's just not enough weight. I'm gonna probably put, I don't know, 150 pounds on there, something like that. We'll see how it feels. But I'm not gonna be planning on doing like three, 400 pounds, anything crazy on this thing. I just want to make sure it'll hold enough weight and feel good and get a good workout. So we'll see how it goes. We'll do that together. You have missed a few things since it's been drying. I have ground these threads down and I've drilled a hole through it and I will show you why. Going back to the reason of me buying a quarter inch size bigger diameter of this pipe than this is so it will slide in. And the problem that I was running into is there was an internal weld which was rubbing up against this. So it wasn't really sliding in very well, but now since I've ground it down, it goes in probably about an inch, somewhere around there. And then what I wanted to do is I wanted this to be removable because my ceilings aren't very tall and I can't stand this thing up straight if it's all connected. So I wanted it to be removable for that, more compactness. And if I wanna build some more heads and change some things out in the future, I've got that possibility. But what I did is I drilled a hole just right through there, as you can see. And a way that I made it a little bit easier is once I drilled a hole through here, I slid this handle in here and then I used that as a guide. So when I was drilling through this one, it'd be exactly correct. So I didn't have to worry 
anything like that. And then I make, made sure that I made it big enough so I can put a bolt through it so that way it will hold it and I don't have to worry about it. If I can get this to work just like that. So that way it's strong and stable. It does have a tiny bit of play. I mean, if you see them, I'll get it right here. I mean, here's the maximum play, but you're not going to be, you're not going to be jerking around with it. Once you get the weight load on it, it's there. It's good to go. So I feel very safe with that. And then when you are done, all you do is just push it out. Just like that. Done. Easy like that. Super easy to assemble. The next thing I'm going to be doing is building the weight plate holder. So that way we can load some weight on here. We're also going to drill some holes through the wood for a spotter or an anchor, depending on what exercise we're doing. So let's jump into that. The way I'm going to pick the spot of having a weight holder on this 4x4, it's not scientific. I'm just putting a 45 pound plate at the front where the handle is going to be. I'm just going to do a little stencil outline of where the circle is. And that is where I'm just going to attach it. Pretty easy and simple. Now let's plop that right about there. And then I just have two two inch and one, two one inch screws. I'm not too worried of this thing getting overloaded or anything like that. Simple as that. Thread this in. Maybe. Maybe that side doesn't like it. Let's try this side. Oh yeah, that's much better. Okay. Simple as that. Not bad at all. The next thing that we have up are the anchors or the spotters, depending on what we're doing. And I'm gonna put the 45 pound back on and then I'm gonna put this at the highest point that I can if that weight was here. And I'm gonna have one for the top and one underneath for the bottom. And my idea is I'm gonna have like a chain or a strap that will hold it from the top along with my Smith machine bar. So that way it's gonna have a few safeties It'll be a safety and it'll also hold this into the current position for the exercise that I'm doing. So it'll be super handy for that. And the bottom one is going to serve mostly as adding some cables to the bottom. So if I wanna add more weight without putting weight here, cause I don't know if the weight's gonna feel super consistent. We'll find out. I imagine it'll probably feel pretty good, but you can always add more weight that way. And then if we wanted to, when I'm doing something like a pull down, I can use the top part to hook cables so that way it'll be like a cool lap machine. So there's a lot of possibilities of what we're going to do, but that is the thinking behind these. It's going to mark about an inch below, just a little line, doesn't have to be super straight. I'll be uh, changing the color of this wood anyways later. Let's see if that is wide enough. That'll fit. Eh. Get out of here. And then if you're curious, these say they're rated for 160 pounds. I think they can hold more than that. Now that is just my opinion. So take that for what it is. But what I'm gonna be doing, I'm not just gonna be using a bolt. I'm gonna put in a washer and then a bolt. So then it spreads out the area that's holding the weight. So that way I think it can hold more than 160, but Again, I don't think I'll be putting more than 160 pounds on this, so we'll see. But I'm going to see if this will go in there. There we are. And then I'll just put a bolt on just for the time being. I am going to cut these bolts shorter because they do poke out a little bit. So I'd like that to look more flush. 
but that is just for a little bit later. We're in the garage now. I have drilled both holes for each of these and I'm going to cut these threads a lot shorter with just an angle grinder and a cutting wheel. A pro tip is to put the nut before the cut. Once you cut it, it's gonna destroy the threads. It's gonna get hot, they're gonna get all bent out of shape. So if you wanna make life easier for you, you put this first and then you'll unthread it and it's gonna straighten everything out, make it so much easier to use. So keep that in mind. Also, keep these in mind. Here we go. All right, we got it cut shorter. And all you do is just unthread it. It's gonna be pretty hot, so give it a minute to cool down. This cut was a little bit diagonal, so I'm gonna fix that up and then I'll be right back with you. Just freshly made it look a little bit nicer. So I'm just gonna use this to manually have it come off. And it'll start to get, it'll probably start to get a little harder. Let's see. Hmm, actually, dang. Man, I'm good. <laughs> I don't think any of the threads got changed at all. So it's a good way to protect, because that way when you try to put this back on, if they're not loaded up right, it's gonna be a pain in the butt. We're back from cutting everything up. I've got top anchor, bottom anchor. It's cut pretty nicely. Threads aren't really poking out too much. Now is the exciting part. Let's see how much weight this thing will hold, or, or at least see if it'll hold the maximum of weight I think I'll be using on this. So let's see. I'm gonna be connecting it to my back pillar. And these are the holes I told you about. It's a little <laughs> crooked, not the best. But these holes were already here. I just made them a little bit bigger. I'm gonna make some, I'll be having these holes and then I'm gonna put some lower holes down here in a minute after we see. But this is how it attaches. And you can attach it to pretty much any squat rack or if you had it to a wall setup. What I would do is I'd have, if you're not familiar with these part names, this is a floor flange. I would attach this to a two by four in your wall, and then you could have a pipe, drill a hole like I did on there and have it attach to itself, have a hole there to attach to this end with the bolt, if that makes sense. Things are getting exciting. We've got this thing hooked up, and then here is an example of the spotter. So I'll just use a strap, attach it to the top. I'm thinking I could do it at the top or there's farther back. Just depends if it starts moving the whole squat rack, but you can see how that works right there. Now let's put some weight on here. And the torture test, it's not so much against this part here, it's more of these because it's gonna be fighting to turn these threads that we put the thread locker on. So that's what my big worry is. Everything else, everything should be fine. Okay, here we go. Let's see how this thing does. We're learning together to see how this does. Okay, so I'm not worried about this thing here. That'll hold just fine. Right here is where it's really gonna see. Okay. Feels pretty sturdy. Let's throw a uh, Let's just throw another 45 on. Let's go crazy. If we're gonna get there, we're gonna get there faster. Okay. So far everything's so good. Okay. That feels good. Here comes this part. I'm gonna hold it at the very end, which will put the most amount of torque on it. Just go nice and easy. Okay. Okay. Passes level two. Another 25. I'm just gonna jump to this. Oh, and there it goes. <laughs> okay. So unfortunately, that is too much for the lock thread. So what I'm gonna do is I'll show you my plan to make it so this is not going to move and we'll go from there. What my plan is with this not being able to hold 
is I'm gonna do the same thing with this, is I'm gonna be drilling a hole through where it's gonna connect and simply put a bolt through it. So that way, it's not going anywhere. If I had stuff to weld, I'd just weld it, but I don't. And I'm sure a lot of other people don't. So that's how we're gonna do it. I'm gonna do one, two, three, four holes. It's probably gonna take a minute, so we'll be back when I get those done. Thank you for waiting so long. I am back and we are back in business on this. What I did was I drilled holes through the joint and the pipe on these four spots. So that way I'm able to slide a bolt through all of them. And I feel like there is no chance of this thing sliding now. I will fine tune it and cut these shorters and put some nuts on them a little bit later. But as for now, this is what we are looking at. You can see them poking through all over the place. Now we're gonna resume our testing. I'm just gonna start where the previous one failed because I know this should be stronger. We shall find out right now. Whoop. Still turning a little bit. Hmm. Oh, well it's turning there. I think that's just because, oh, there's just a tiny bit of gap. So I think what I might do is I might JB weld the bolts, put them in and then bolt them up, but they do hold. And then once I put a bolt on here to tighten it down, should make it pretty good. But overall, that's only if I'm doing like Viking press or something like that. And that's if I'm coming way out here. So I could be using this handle, which there's no worry of it coming undone or anything like that. It's just these right here. But if I'm doing like a safety bar squat, the bar is going to be resting right here and these will just basically be handles. So I think it'll still be pretty dang good. So it does pass. I don't know if I'll go much more weight than this. We'll just see how it feels when I'm doing some exercises and just slowly go from there. It is a new day and we've got some updates for you. I did put some shorter bolts with a nut through all of these. This one was just a touch too long or too short, I mean, but I believe it's not going to go anywhere. I did have to thread it in just to get it in there. So I don't think it's going to go anywhere. And for future plans, it's going to get wrapped in some duct tape. Also, I have added a little three way adapter on both ways. So that way, it helps with, you can do wide grip presses or pull downs or just have a little bit wider of a bar. And it also protects your hands from the threads. I will be putting some duct tape over these threads because they can cut you if you grab it wrong. I did update the washer on both sides with just a little bit bigger of a washer. I've done one test drive workout with legs and it worked really well but I just wanted to beef that up a little bit. And then I did one little update. I added a little wing nut here. Just makes it a little bit easier to make it tighter and looser without having to use a tool. And lastly, I did update, let's see if I can show you in the mirror. I updated the washers. I made it so they're much wider because the problem is I was having is they would slide through this gap right here see if it'll zoom in or focus but this gap was big enough that the washer and the screw would come through so this would come off so I put a wider one and then I went from a two to a three inch screw on all of these so it does seem a lot more secure we are back to this again my goal is I just want it to be able to not move whatsoever when I'm lifting by these long ones for the 245s and 225s I don't think I'm ever gonna go any heavier on these handles. For these ones, I'll probably go heavier, but I'm not worried about that rotating or anything. I just want these to be really strong. So if I'm doing like a safety bar apparatus and I'm pulling on those or their weight's going, I just don't want it to slip, any chance of injury like that. So let's get back to this weight where it failed previously. See how it does. Okay. No problem. There was a tiny bit of movement, but that's just because the hole that I drilled 
wasn't 100% filled by the bolt. So it has a tiny bit of wiggle, but once it's moved, it's not gonna move anymore. And now, the piste des resistance, or whatever those oh, 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 say. All right, let's see how this does. Okay. Well, didn't move. Didn't move anymore. I don't think I'd ever do that much weight for that, but just to know that it can do it makes me feel better. So we'll say that's a win. Next thing I have planned is I'm gonna add some padding to this small portion here because that's gonna go across the back whenever I'm doing any sort of squat motion. And then I'm gonna put some pads about halfway on each of these. So that way if I'm doing a safety bar way, it'll have a little bit of cushion. And then I'll wrap it in some duct tape. I'll tape those and I think that's gonna be just about everything as far as that goes. So let's jump into that. Here's where the pool noodles come in. This is a full pool noodle from the old dollar store. And then this is a little sliver. And what I've done is I'm gonna make sure that the meatiest part is where my shoulders and traps will be holding the weight. So it's nice and squishy. Just kind of push it on a little bit. And then this, this is just basically for cosmetics. So I'm just gonna make a little slit right here so it'll go around real nice. Okay, that looks pretty good. Then, just gonna wrap it in some good old duct tape. Next, this is an easy one. This will actually slide on here. And then these have to match, of course. So let's wrap these bad boys in some duct tape. And I'll probably put a little bit here so it won't fall down. There we have it. Look at that. That's looking all fancy and stuff. Wow. And these are removable because I'm not gonna always need these. If I'm doing like a chest press or if I wanna do a different variation of rows. So, looks pretty good. And then a quick little safety measure on these threads. Because I've already cut myself on them by just moving the pipes around. I was like, what the heck? I could always put like a cap on these, but a little bit of duct tape is cheaper and it matches. Oh yeah, oh yeah, not gonna get cut. Oh yeah. <laughs> I made two last minute adjustments. Firstly is I wrapped this in duct tape. So if you ever wanna do one armed rows, you don't have to worry about the threads cutting you or anything like that. Also, it helps hold the bolt in, which is really nice. And then I made an adjustment with this. This was the first hole that I had, and it did hold pretty well. Structurally and everything, I don't think it would have affected it. Whoopsies. But it was a little bit wiggly. So if I had it at this depth, it had a little more wiggle than I wanted. I know I can't get rid of all of it, but if I was able to get it in just a little bit more, it made the up and down wiggle pretty much non-existent which made it feel really good. It'll always have a little bit of side to side, which I'm okay with, that's totally fine. But what I did was I just ground this down and made it so it was able to go in about an inch deeper, drilled some holes, and it feels a lot better. And that concludes this video. I hope it really helped you out and gave you some ideas of what you can build for your gym, ways that you can build something like this. And if you've got some ways that can make this better, definitely let me know. Leave some comments down below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Or if you have any issues with your specific setup, let me know. I'll try to help you out. You can follow me on the talk or the gram. I'll leave that in the description below. You can also get some self-built merch there. And stay tuned for the, some more videos of stuff working out with this. 
And we'll be back with more on Southfield.